Hello everyone, this is Dr. Nasser Hatami, I'm a general practitioner in Iran. My presentation here aims to spark a crucial psychosocial dialogue related to effects of the mass events like a pandemic. It's an urgent call to address patient-related delayed care as a major health threat. This study is about patients who had an emergency situation but due to their fear of getting infected by the SARS-CoV-2 virus, they didn't refer to hospital on time. Uh, also, this study was published in Journal of Global Health. The part of the study that I think could be related to this webinar was gastroenterology emergencies like upper and lower GI bleeding, but while we didn't include these conditions in our study, because I uh, assumed that uh, there was someone who had a bloody interesting surprise while vomiting. Uh, they tried to act all cool and keep it a secret, but seriously, how can someone hide something like that? A patient who who sees blood in their vomit would seek medical attention immediately in almost every cases. So um, we had this little plan to tell that uh, while not being directly aligned with the main focus of gastrohepto conference, our study has far-reaching implications for entire healthcare community. To start the story, when I was uh, an intern in last days of 2021, one day something happened that made me realize the seriousness of the situation. A little boy was brought in with terrible pain in his stomach and testicles. His family had been scared to come, the come to the hospital because of the virus. They just had waited until the pain got really bad before seeking help. But it was too late. The boy ended up losing one of his testicles due to testicular torsion uh, because they didn't come in sooner. So this heartbreaking even made me think about how the pandemic was affecting people's decisions to seek help and to seek medical care. It inspired me to do a study to see if any other medical emergencies were also being delayed because of the COVID-19 fears. After a literature review, I got that this issue is addressed by many researchers from different countries about many other medical emergencies. So we decided to collect all of those uh, studies and perform a meta-analysis study on that. Uh, all, but this is a panel of systematic reviews. It means that our study is consists of uh, many systematic reviews. Uh, and also there were other co-authors that uh, here I would like to express my sincere gratitude to all those co-authors who contributed to this study, to their, to their valuable uh, insights, their dedication, and their hard work. So, let's start with the methods. And our objective of a study was to evaluate the COVID-19 pandemic impact on the time-sensitive emergency health conditions. To conceptualize the study question and study design, we used the PICO method Population Intervention Comparison Outcome, PICO. And uh, you can see it in the picture. Our population of interest was previously known as healthy, stable patients that were being visited in emergency department for an emergency condition. We limited the analysis to the conditions with a specific golden time or golden hour or any outcome that was showing the incidence of delayed care. For example, orchitomy is uh, preventable for testicular torsion if being treated in golden hours. Outcome of interest was the prevalence of failure or disruption of treatment due to delayed referral and uh, also the time of onset of disease to hospital door time. Uh, and we compared these uh, variables before and after the COVID-19 pandemic. 
So our study question can be conceptualized as has the incidence of endpoint marking delayed healthcare seeking in a medical emergency been changed in comparison of patients referring to EDs before and during the COVID-19? Or has the time of disease symptom onset to emergency room been changed in comparison of patients referring to ED before and during the COVID-19 pandemic? So we performed the study and here are the results. Uh, following the literature review, we included 96 studies in seven panels of different medical conditions. There were multiple number of patients in all those studies. And uh, let's go to our findings. Our main findings was that amidst the pandemic, mm, there was a noteworthy increase in the median time of symptom onset to admission for acute coronary syndrome patients. While well, we didn't saw this for CVA, but also mm, there was an elevated uh, rate of vasoespasm of aneurysm on subarachnoid hemorrhage, mm, SAH, that could be seen as an indicator of late care in CT angiography of these patients. And uh, also in next results, there were alarming rates of complications in various medical emergencies like acute appendicitis, diabetic ketoacidosis and uh, others. So we defined the medical emergency and the indicator of, indicator of late referral or markers of failure or disrupted treatment. For example, symptom onset emergency medical service call time was indica indicator of late referral for CVA or MI. It means that after the COVID-19 pandemic, it took more time to decide to call EMS or come to hospital compared to before the pandemic. A perforated appendicitis was indicator of late referral for acute appendicitis and we saw an increased rate of perforated appendicitis in period that was during the pandemic compared to before, before the pandemic in some studies, not all of them. While this might also be related to other factors like in hospital delays of diagnosis, late surgeries or other possible things that might also happen due to restrictions of the pandemic. Next result, we saw that an increased rate of getting DTA among patients with newly diagnosed type 1 diabetes has happened. Also, rate of archaeotomy had been increased among testicular torsion patients. Uh, but the point related to gastroenterology is that uh, the distinction between gastroenterology and surgery in managing acute abdomen is not always clear cut. And in many cases, the team approach involving gastroenterologists general surgeons and other specialists may be needed for proper evaluation and treatment. But um, if patient has referred late, what happens? Many conditions causing acute abdomen can worsen over time if not promptly being diagnosed and treated. For example, appendicitis can progress from simple inflammation to a ruptured appendix. It can be leading to peritonitis or uh, in case of perforated viscous such as uh, ruptured appendix or perforated ulcer of the duodenum or peptic ulcer, bacteria from digestive system can enter the abdomen cavity and cause an infection. This condition is also known as peritonitis can lead to sepsis that is really life threatening. Also, certain conditions causing acute abdomen such as severe pancreatitis may lead to organ dysfunction or organ failure if not being treated promptly. For example, acute pancreatitis can lead to pancreatic necrosis and uh, many more complications. 
So, delaying medical care can result in prolonged pain and discomfort, discomfort for the patient and decrease the overall well-being and quality of life of the patient. Um, when a surgical intervention is required, delaying the treatment may increase the risk of surgical complications or necessitate more extensive surgical procedures or interventions. Also, late referral can lead to more extensive, extended uh, hospital stay for the patient uh, because it's need for more aggressive treatment and management. Also, uh, we, would, um, we might have a higher health care costs. Delayed referral and treatment may result in increased health care. But um, what does this study tells, uh, tells us? What should we do? I think social education about symptoms that require immediate medical referral or EMS call uh, is essential for a community to raise awareness and empower individuals to recognize potentially life-threatening conditions promptly. And while the focus in recent times has been on the COVID-19 pandemic, it is crucial to not to overlook other non-COVID-19 diseases that continue to impact communities. Uh, also, we need specialized uh, hospitals and social edu education play vital roles in managing pandemics and um, COVID-19 diseases effectively. We also might need special hospitals for non-COVID-19 uh, diseases during the pandemic. And uh, instead of um, those uh, hospitals, that are for the non-COVID-19 diseases, segregation of uh, patients and uh, dividing patients in uh, hospitals that there are also COVID-19 patients could uh, help to decrease the fear of the patients and uh, decrease the risk of uh, getting infected by the COVID-19. I think th this would be uh, doable by focused care. Uh, the hospitals can concentrate uh, resources and their medical staff or equipments and for non-COVID-19 patients aligned with the other COVID-19 patients. And also we have to uh, do the continuity of services for all other diseases. There are also uh, chronic medical conditions that uh, need uh, help. In during a pandemic or a situation and mass event like this. Mm, this was what uh, my study was about and thank you for giving you giving me your time.